Um, so I'm going to give a talk on stochastic equations. And uh, originally I planned to make the talk about, um, let's see, about, first I was going to talk about PDFs, uh, probability density functions, and their generalizations, the multivariate general, generalizations. And then I was going to talk about, uh, oh, like classical chaos. As in classical mechanics, um, and then I was going to talk about um, oh well, the yeah, the master equation, yeah. and then at the end I was going to talk about uh, Brownian functions, it's kind of the prototypical example of what we'll be studying to come. So the Langley equation. Okay, so. In the beginning, so I originally didn't really want to do a talk on stochastic equations, but it's an interesting topic. And actually, there is a story to, I guess, my first encounter of stochastic uh, processes. And that is, when I was a kid, actually, I wondered if uh, you could win the lottery, right? Because if you have a lottery machine, it has the balls, right? They're, they're all moving around. There's like 60 or, or some balls. And in principle, all the equations are deterministic. So in principle, if you knew the initial conditions, then you could just evolve forward and see which ball get chosen. And I knew it was going to be difficult. Um, I didn't put, like, put super much idea. It was just a quick thought. I didn't actually <laughs> solve all those equations. But I knew that, OK, I mean, in principle, it should be possible. Right? And uh, I didn't know anything about chaos theory. What else would you do before that? And so originally, that's what my kind of talk here was uh, classical chaos was going to be. But this talk, this portion is incomplete. So I'm not going to cover that. So I was going to talk about the Louisville equation for you know, all those uh, the balls in there, and then talk about the Boltzmann equation, and tie that in back to stochastic equations. Because stochastic equations are they're really just math. And it's all just chunks of some physics. There's some physics in this. Uh, Related because the Louisville equation and the Boltzmann equation talk about time evolution of density. Density helps the case space. Density is the particle. So I thought that was an interesting idea. So that's how we segue from classical mechanics. Okay, so the issue with my my idea of uh, trying to win the lottery, right? I mean, it's difficult, but you'll get 100 million, right? So is it worth your while? <laughs> so that, that was a big, but the, the truth is, you, you can't win that because of chaos theory, right? So you have a sensitivity to initial conditions. And so in the beginning, everything's pretty correlated. You, you know where everything is, but as time evolves, then uh, the system just becomes very scrambled and unpredictable. This is actually, you could actually measure this using the Lampinoff experiment. And so what I was going to go through with classical chaos is I was going to go through Okay, so these are the equations for all the balls. You write the Hamiltonian. The Hamiltonian would be symmetric. That means every ball would have the same Allen number. And then you could um, essentially reduce your phase space down to six dimensions. But, all right, so let's, let's just talk about this. Now, I was a bench, uh, when I was talking about PDFs, I was considering a, giving a definition of probability, but I found that like very difficult because it's something very intuitive, and the formal definition is I feel very convoluted and not really worthwhile. And we all have a, an idea of what probability is. So the first thing I'll define is a probability density function. And a probability density function, I just see as, I mean, I just had this like, uh, for a definition, right, for a PDF is, is the, I like to say, it's the relative likelihood It assigns at a relative likelihood, a relative likelihood of its state to any other uh, in the state space. So, throughout my talk, I will label omega, capital omega, as the state space. So that could be, it's just any probability space. It could be the real numbers, it could be a sphere, it could be any space you can think of, phase space is also this. And additionally, you can even think of it as a discrete space. 
the formally speaking, probability density functions are defined on the continuum. And then the, the analog, the discrete analog of the probability density function is the probability mass function, which assigns the relative probability or likelihood rather to each state in the state space. So, um, there's properties to PDFs, uh, which yeah, I was originally planning to print a bunch of these out, but uh, I guess I'll just go through this. So that is, we can determine expectation values, and the, one of the most important expectation values is actually the exponential Fourier transform. So a PDF in my talk is labeled as a row state space is omega. So you can think of row as a function of the state space onto the real numbers. Okay. And so this is uh, one of the, uh, you could essentially power series expand your PDF and try to get expectation values. And this would, you could break down with the power series expand the exponential, you'll get um, what we call moments. I just want to run through it quick. It's not a big thing to. And what these are essentially is our generalizations, and it's just an integral over x. Integral over x. What moments are essentially is they're, they're scalars that tell you something about the PDF. So you can have variance mean and then mathematicians came up essentially with a whole infinite number of numbers you could associate to a PDF. That being said, not all PDFs could be associated with the same number. So you have Lorentzian distribution, which we'll talk about later, which is used to explain like resonance conditions in physics. Those cannot, uh, there's no moment for those. But Fourier transform does not exist. So and then the last one, actually, that I want to talk about is uh, which is uh, called the uh, Feynman one. So that's the same as the one. And this is actually what I mean, like a generalization of the mean. For the stochastic process we're interested in physics, like the Langevin process, actually, it can be shown that all these other moments, all these other things that actually don't include the other moments. So um, these are uh, three characteristics. And uh, so basically, what I did here is all I did is I power series expanded the exponential and pulled the integral outside, uh, at least some outside. That's, that's actually not too important because these are just definitions and you just want to get past this. Um, yeah, on here I had listed various types of probability density functions. So, you know, the most popular example, we're going to go over on this time again, is the Gaussian. So, the Gaussian is parameterized by the mean and variance, how the spread essentially. And I think we all know. Function something like x plus rho. And that's like the most popular one. The most frequently used Gaussian distribution. There's others. There's Cauchy Schwartz, uh, um, Cauchy Lorenz, Gamma distribution, and then Maxwell Boltzmann. They kind of all come from there. Uh, Another way you can think of this, because this is a PDF over the state space is R. But uh, another common one I like to think about is if your state space is a sphere, like a surface sphere, a probability distribution you can find on that is like cross section. That's another one. There's, a, um, there's another type of state space you can define 
for an arbitrary state space, if you have a Hilbert space then over this, you can find the proper amplitude for this, their square and natural square is about this much larger. So these are all examples. Essentially, for any weird type of space, if you can assign Hilbert space to it, and then solve Grunger equation, you can actually get another PDF. So these are all PDFs on uh, Omega. And then I was going to talk about uh, multivariate PDFs. But there's, so now we have multiple variables. Um, and so there's actually something we should uh, caution here. Because with multiple variables, you can have correlations between the variables. So that's something we need to keep in mind. And um, uh, one, let's, let's, yeah, the best example for a multiple variable um, PDF is Gaussian, which is uh, if you can generalize what this, this is a vector. Um, Essentially, yeah, I just want to get to the main part. So now we're going to call sigma the variance. So the variance of this is uh, this thing is sigma, and you can think of this as a matrix. And then the inverse is multiplied by two column vectors, which is the, all your possible variables 